So I'm starting to get set up here. So I got some of my components out. Got some snares that made some catches. I'm gonna cut my wire here. I've got some ferrules there lined out. These are my little kits that I have. This is for the bigger stuff. This is a 1 16th cable, which I only use for anchoring. Power rounds, a couple of them. 3 30 seconds. 3 30 second uh, cam locks with the big breakaways. Some halibut swivels there. Some original kill springs. Oh. Then I go here, it's my smaller stuff, 1 16th uh, stuff. So on the killing end of the snares, uh, I say coyote snares, but it, it's a mixture of wolf and coyote. Uh, I go with 60 inches, that way I don't have to worry about uh, between the wolf and coyote snares. So if I make it 60 inches, I got enough to make a, a good loop. I got my poly... Uh, Anchor supports, some kill springs. Uh, like I said before, bear with me. And I moved it already. Found it. I'm gonna use these kill springs here. Uh, A1. I'll remake these. With A1 springs and see how that goes for me this year. I'll set up the camera again and we will video it and I'll double time it for you. So like I said I like to make the uh, kill ends 60 inches. So just measure out one. You get the 60 inches. Five feet. So this whole roll here, I will uh, just use that up, put it on that rod like that, otherwise it'll spring out and just like it's trying to do now, but it's long enough that it keeps it from doing it, and I'll measure out until I run out. So there we go, that was a little bit boring. But we made, made enough there, I think, to do what we need to do. And uh, yeah, so we'll start making some snares here. I'll, I'll zoom you guys up so you can see the sequence. Okay, so I just grabbed one here. And because we are, are doing uh, wolf slash coyote snares and I'm not sure what your provincial laws are and stuff like that but here in Alberta we don't need breakaways and all that but it's coming so you might as well build your stuff now because uh, instead of cutting all your your snares and whatnot later to do it you have all the equipment now and you have experience with it So I put two double ferrules on, leaving about an eighth sticking out. And give it a good, good squish. And that shouldn't go out. Uh, so for here, because I flattened that out, I'll put uh, a little washer. Just a riveting washer. You can go to a hardware store or... Uh, big farm supply and say you need some uh, backup plates for riveter rivets and that will work for you so we got this here we got one washer just gives it a, a 
Nice surface for your kill spring to go on the back side. And then we'll put the kill spring here. So that's what we, we're using the A1 kill spring right now. Then we'll put another washer. I'll get that later. So you got another flat washer in there. Now we'll put our break or yeah, our breakaway, sorry. And slide that down. And then put a collar support. And we'll come here, grab one of these. Use cables with a barrel. I'm gonna grab a couple barrels. Put your ferrule on. Go through your swivel eye. Pull that up. You can pull it right tight if you want. I like a little, little bit of a play so when I'm hanging it, it doesn't bind. And there we go. So now you have your loop. Like that. This is how I always make mine. The manufacturer, the guy that makes the A1 kill spring, recommends you make your loop and then feed it through just so you don't get this twist here uh, we'll make one like that and I'll show you just what it means but I find when it closes anyways it kind of aligns itself right so on the other side if you can see that it aligns itself but the other way it's always aligned it doesn't have this kink and maybe a weak, weak spot <coughs> excuse me you should always check your snare to make sure you got everything in the right order and it fires quick. So we'll just, just because we did one here, you just touch that and it drops and that's what you want. Okay, we'll make a few more and I'll make one like the manufacturer recommends. Okay, well, made a couple snares there already. So now I thought I'd show you guys how to do it the other way. So now you just got to reverse your order how you put things on. Just your collar support, your cam lock and breakaway. What I like about these breakaways too, not only do they uh, release non-targets, uh, they help your snare hang true straight up and down because the old way you used to have to kind of bend your wires or or make sure you had the lay of the cable. Because when you cut a cable, it's gonna to wanna to go back to its original shape. So, so round, so you just have to lay it down and then when you're putting your your crimps in, your ferrules, you wanna make sure that the loop stayed true. Sometimes they'd twist and stuff like that. And that was always a nightmare to, especially out in the field trying to get it to go straight. So these are kind of compensators, uh, some people call them. Of course, I had to do that. <clears throat> and you've seen in the other video, or at the beginning of this video, I guess, that I wasn't afraid to uh, use a little bit of extra cable to make sure my equipment's working properly. Uh, not only do you owe it to the animal, but then you know your equipment's good and you're you're set up to go. So again, I have all the components here: collar support, cam lock with a breakaway. You can see this breakaway is a little bit bigger. Uh, this is for wolves. And then you got your uh, washer and then your trigger kill spring combination. The A1 kill spring, and another washer. And then I'll do a couple double ferrules here, or two singles, 
which would make a double. I actually goofed that up. It's going to show you how the manufacturer recommends you, you do it. So I'll go back a step here. So you get your, your cable on there and your, your lock. Recommends you make your put your camera lock on, and then you see how the other way I just feed it through this side. So when I go to pull it through, I'll pull it through on this side. Hopefully, you guys can see. So here. I hung it, then I went through it. What this does is when it's hanging here, it uh, makes the loop a little bit truer and it doesn't bind it. And then with the spring, it's pulling straight on this piece here, pulling straight across here to tighten that up once it goes off. I'll build it, then I'll show you again here. So same sequence of events. You make your loop, feed it through the cam lock, Loose end comes through the breakaway, so it's hanging straight down and like that. Put your washer there. Kill spring. It can go either way. Uh, with the with Marty's, they, they say you should have it this way, so it doesn't catch on the end stop. I've never had that happen to myself. Myself personally, uh, I've caught hundreds of coyotes like that, and uh, but. I'm just going to do it this way there and the pur purpose of this washer is to keep this uh, loop here this uh, S hook from going through the spring just acts as a buffer be between the two they can twist in there if you don't have those and then actually open them up that way so now I got in this sequence here I'll put my two single ferrules Now I can make my loop. Trying to make it so you guys can see. So you make your loop so it hangs like that now. So when it goes down, closes. And then as this spring pops off, you see the, the gap here? When that's compressed, that actually ends up to be about like this. And then so it sucks it up an inch and a half. So it's tightening it up an inch and a half on that animal's neck, which puts it down right away. So we'll slide that through. You end up with, with this. Uh, if you open your loop like that, that's why I kind of like the other way to lay, lay flatter. I understand where he's coming from on that. Like everything's pulling straight. Uh, pulling in alignment here. The other way, if I show you, it'll just kind of be pulling off to the side and it's twisted. But to me, it's consistent because it's always flat against this. And... Uh, I think it's just a little easier and quicker to build it the other way. So I'm going to do some trialing. I'll mark these snares up when I build them like this. Or when I catch an animal, I'll take a, take note and see what, what I see there. And then I can share that with you guys later. Alright, so I'll build some more snares here. Maybe I'll show you at the end after I have some how we boil them and prep them for this season. Okay, just because I'm going to do a little follow-up on that one. I made this snare the way I showed showed you first there. Just slide everything on. Don't have to worry about making a loop. So here's your kill spring. 
make your loop. This is what I meant when I said it uh, twists a little bit. See how quick that closed? That's what you want on your snares. So it twists like this a little bit, like that. But you can just kind of straighten it out like that. It's not too bad. Uh, you can even kink this here so it's straight off to the back. But I find you don't need that. That's just extra, extra work you're doing. A little bit of a twist like this isn't bad. It's when you get them really bad like that off to the side. Then you just have to adjust them a bit. But just touch it, it closes. And then with the other one, right now it start to, to twist. So this would, they don't get much tighter than this on a Cayute's neck, like that's fox size there. And if you look here, everything's in line, everything's pushing. This is gonna be against the animal's neck anyways. Uh, this pressure here is pushing on there, on the cam locks on his neck, so that's kind of pushing it closed, and that just sucks it up a bit. One of the concerns of the Corey's talks about here, when it's this way, it'll actually push that and try and open it. I don't, it might be like that. I haven't done enough experimenting uh, to prove that. But I think it's, once that's in there and that spring goes off, it's got seconds there uh, to make a decision and it's not trying to figure out if uh, you made your snare one way or the other. Because with they, these uh, kill springs, the Magnums, doesn't matter which manufacturer, I'm thinking uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be done right away. So that's just kind of my review and like I said, I'll build some more and we'll boil some snares here. Another thing I wanted to show you guys, um, the breakaways. So if you look at it, there's like a, an S hook. There's a big piece and a little piece. The little piece always goes on your, your cable and the big loop always goes on your cam lock. So right here I got a 1 16th uh, cam lock with some file teeth in there. This breakaway is 750 pounds. So something that's able to generate 750 pounds of energy, it will release it. It won't let go a coyote or a wolf. The odd deer it might open up on and a moose it will. But if it catches any of the animals like a moose or deer around the nose, it won't let go. So this is a 750 pound breakaway. And it doesn't actually break, you've seen when I stretched it out on that other uh, piece of wire when it's testing it just straightens out so when it straightens out it should straighten out and release the animal at that poundage what I found works best for me is uh, you can go to your swedger and swedge it in but I have these fencing pliers here and I just put it in in the middle give it a little squeeze closes that up does the same there. Then I put it right in the middle and I squeeze it tight and it closes it just about perfect. If you use uh, a swedger or something else or a hammer and tap it, you can actually weaken the loop part and put a kink in there and it will release. Some of the manufacturers when they make it, just the way it goes through their press, will make a weak spot there. So if you see some of those, uh, and there's a dent in the metal, that's going to be a weak spot. So those might break on you, actually break and not open up the proper way. Just wanted to show you that there. So this one would be ready to go. Just tie it up here. So this is last year's hardware, maybe the year before. So all this stuff can be reused. Your swivels. So all like I just cut those off and reuse it. And like I said, all they have to do is be uh, look over real quick to make sure they aren't damaged and reuse them. 
So your initial costs are a little bit high for the snares, but after that, it's just the ferrules and cable. And then you just resort it and call her good. Okay, catch you later. Ready? Yep, 357.